So you should be able to see the screen and sound should be fine. Welcome to the session. And uh, as always, we are going to apply the supply and demand strategy that we go over here in all these sessions. And um, we're going to spend most of our time on the live markets today. Sometimes we focus on learning the strategy. Sometimes we focus on applying the strategy. Today we'll focus more on applying it since the markets are really moving and we're coming into some good, good opportunities here. Also, I have my list of markets that I will uh, that I plan on going through. But if you have any markets you want me to look at, just let me know, and um, and we can do that. Okay. All right. Yeah, good. We will definitely look at the pound for sure, Thomas. So for those that are a little bit newer to these sessions, we always a uh, um, apply the same strategy here and uh, it's a strategy I developed many years ago on the trading floor at the Chicago Mercantile Exchange and uh, that's when I was handling institutional order flow um, and it's really looking at um, the market's real supply and demand right through uh, the price chart identifying price points where supply and demand are significantly out of balance because that's where prices turn in markets and then finding price points um uh you know profit zones right so essentially identifying filled orders and unfilled orders uh significant unfilled orders and significant filled orders those areas on the price chart as we know that we've been over many times in these webinars Unfilled orders cause prices to turn. Filled orders facilitate price movement. If we can focus on identifying those two pictures every time we look at a chart in any market for any financial purpose, um, that's the focus we want to have. All right. Yeah, we will. Uh, we will take a look at all those markets. Why don't we start um, instead of going, you know, individual market to individual market? We're going to do that. But why don't we focus on group to group? And uh, we're on the equity index group right now. We're looking at the S&P. Why don't we stick with the equity index group for a little bit? And then we'll move on to the bond markets. Uh, from there, let's go to the energy and metal and then, um, and then the FX markets. And we'll spend, uh, we'll wrap up and spend most of our time on the FX markets. Does that make sense? But we'll look at all the major markets inside each of those groups. Okay, so here's the S&P. By the way, <clears throat> I deliver a morning trading session every day for members. And um, so I thought I'd kind of run through that list here. And one of the themes, actually, um, I was going to bring this up. Let me, yeah, let me just bring it up here. So take a look at this uh, right here. So this is from this morning I created this. Um, what we see is, you know, obviously the US dollar is such a key market for all markets. And this is a prep screen that I, I put together every morning um, with different opportunities and different thoughts, you know, just key, key stuff for that day, that week, that month. Here we have the dollar on the left, um, you know, has been dropping, um, nearing an area of demand down in here. And we'll look at this live chart in a few minutes. Um, and that's after falling from our supply zone up here. I think we went over that in our FX Street sessions. But um, what's what's you know what's different and makes it a little bit tricky is the distance between our supply and demand is really uh, really wide. Um, but and you know if you look at the picture of the price action in between the two levels, this represents what? What does this price action here represent? Filled orders or unfilled orders? All this stuff right here. If you had to pick one, yeah, filled orders, right? And remember, filled orders facilitate price movement. Filled orders obviously means the lack of significant unfilled orders or you know, supply and demand, right? So um, the dollar can very easily move quickly through this area. Now, given that there's a lack of quality with the supply and demand zones that I'm showing you here in the dollar, 
we can go over that in a little bit. Um, where can we get some help? Well, we can get some help by looking at the euro. Here's a weekly chart of the euro. And here we see the euro as of this morning was uh, for the second time revisiting our supply zone as seen on the weekly chart. So obviously the dollar is a big uh, part of the, I'm sorry, the euro is a big part of the, uh, the weighted dollar index, right? Picks up a big slice of that pie. So with the dollar possibly, you know, nearing uh, or hitting demand and the euro into supply, right? We could see both these markets uh, possibly turning. So that would be a significant event. Do you understand that? Makes sense? If so, we can move on and let's do that. Having said that, I mean, the dollar is an important market for just about any market we're going to look at. Now let's go back to the equity index group. And the main point we've been making in the equity index group is, is really this. Um, first of all, look at how far price. Um, oh, that's not the S&P. That's the NASDAQ. So let's get the S&P. Now, what we've been talking about here is how far price is from demand as seen on the larger time frames. So even the S&P is still about, you know, 25, uh, 27 points away from uh, any significant demand, right? And um, at the same time, we're starting to have supply zones show up. Here's a supply zone that we were looking at this morning. Obviously, that's uh, met entry already. But um, if the stock market does... Uh, rally or it does bounce off of our demand zone that it's getting close to the 3221 down here. Um, there is a fresh supply zone up around 3249. Uh, I'm sorry, 3250 at the moment. Now we're far from that level now, so I wouldn't expect that uh, in the very near future. But just note that we do have some demand down here, 3221 and a half. It's a small time frame demand zone. So, um, but nevertheless, we would expect prices to turn there. Notice price almost got to those that level a couple times and didn't. That suggests, uh, again, an imbalance there, right? So the combination of new supply showing up and the fact that we're so far from demand, again, suggests you could see uh, a, a bigger drop in price. And that was the message, you know, before the drop this morning. So now you're seeing uh, that drop start. No big surprises there. Same thing in the NASDAQ. You know, with prices currently at uh, 87.20 and significant demand not till 86.22, that's almost 100 points lower, right? Almost 100 points lower. So um, we do have a little demand zone. Is that a little bit closer? I think it is. Hang on a second. 8622. Yeah, a little bit before that 8622 coming in about 8638. Again, we're far from that right now, so um, no, no point in spending too much time on it. So that's the S&P and NASDAQ from both a supply and demand perspective. We see that the profit zones are big and um, we just need to be patient and wait for prices to come to our levels. That's how the game works, right? The weakest of all these markets is the Russell. Now the Russell is, there it is. Okay, the Russell had some is the one of one of the uh, um, the S and P and Nasdaq did not have this, but the Russell had a supply zone sitting just above, right? And we barely came into it this morning. You could see it up there, with quite a bit of room below in the larger time frames. However, when we come down to the smaller time frames. We see that the Russell actually just hit a level that we uh, that I gave the group this morning. This is the 1663. Um, I'm sorry, not that level. Oh yeah, that's a level. We didn't didn't go over it with them this morning, but um, uh, but we had that level there, and then you know same level right here on the uh, you can see on the 15 minute chart, just a little bit tighter, right? This is the whole area that I was just showing you. So if we come back down to that area, again that's. 1663 down to 1657. We've already gone halfway into it. So uh, lower probability, lower odds the next time price comes down as there's less um, unfilled buy orders down there. And don't want to spend too much time on any one group. We've gone over the S&P in detail, the NASDAQ in detail, and now a little bit of the Russell. But from there, why don't we go to the bond market, which is very, very much tied to the equity index markets. I'm not going to spend too much time here, but what I wanted to go over with you is 
We have a couple levels to look at here. I guess we could start with the 10 year. So here's a uh, supply zone in the smart. Well, first of all, before, just to give you some bigger picture context, here are the two supply levels we've been trading off of. Okay. Here are the, here are the so this is the weekly chart. We've had both of these supply zones. Prices hit these levels and just, uh, you know, dropped. Um, but if we do get another rally, we have a, another supply zone up here. This one really starts at, um, that's the wrong price. Let me do this. this one right here. Really starts about 128.24 and goes up to about 128.30. So 128.24 to about 128.30. Right, that's this area right in here. Um, I actually have an order sitting in there to take that trade, just full disclosure there, so you know. But we need the market to come back up. It came within two ticks that level the other day last week, but uh, didn't get there. In the bigger picture, there's still room, right? We don't have any, uh, you know, any quality demand until the gap demand down around 125.21 we're quite a bit higher from that at the moment, right? So there's room. Um, I see your question about the Russell. Let me just go back there. <clears throat> I think you're talking about this supply zone up here uh, on the daily. Yeah. No, we would, uh, according to the rules, there's nothing telling us not to short there again. In fact, price just barely touched that zone, if at all, and fell. So we that's uh, giving us some secondary evidence that you have a big supply demand imbalance up there. Okay. We've gone over the uh, 10 year, the 30 year is basically the same story. Why don't we move on to the energy markets? Now, um, when we get there, you know, oil and natural gas and all those, we'll go with to the, and we'll look at that group and then we'll look at the metals, gold, silver, maybe copper. Um, but you, I want you to, before we get to either of them, I want you to notice, know that there is a big difference between the two at the moment. Remember, our job as market speculators is not to wake up every day and trade. Your job is to wake up every day and look for low risk, high reward, and high probability opportunity. If you see it, you know, take it and act like a robot. If you don't, then you just sit tight, right? Um, but my point is, in the energy markets, we're kind of in waiting mode, right? Prices have traded, you know, you know, moved nicely off of our levels, but now they're in the middle of a move and, and not that close to the next key level. Whereas in the metals markets, gold, silver, copper, platinum, we've got plenty of opportunity there. Okay, so let's take a look at that. And let's start with, uh, here's oil. So here we're going to start with, I want to take you to the daily chart for a minute. See those supply zones up there? Now, you may be thinking, looking at this and say, well, why are you showing us supply zones that are that far from current price? Well, to, to give you context on, on the odds, on the probability of our trades, you know, working out and bigger picture, longer duration type opportunities, as far as shorting goes, you, we kind of have to wait till prices get, you know, well above you know, I'd say above $66 a barrel in the futures here. Doesn't mean there's no other opportunity, but that's where the key ones are. So now we come down to the four hour chart. Um, we see we have demand, it's lower, 59.40. And also, um, go to the five minute chart here. We've traded nicely off our demand zone, but we're, you know, there's not, uh, we're, we're far from that now. There's nothing to do. One thing that's popped up over the past uh, couple hours here is this new supply zone above current price. See that up there? All right, let me put that in. And um, again, this is not a high quality level. If you're okay with the risk, it, it uh, you know, it, it has a decent profit zone with it. So there's a level about 6205 to about 
10. So, you, you know, you'd probably want to, if you want this opportunity and you're okay with the risk, you'd want to get in a little bit before the level. And obviously put your stop just a touch above the level. But there it is. We're looking at a five minute chart and that's oil. Don't want to spend too much time here because I just showed you how far we are from significant demand and significant supply. But when we move over to gold, a different story. And we don't have to go much further than the 60 minute chart. So gold right now is trading about 15, 18 and a half. We have some uh, decent demand down around 1504 and more demand around 1495. Okay, when we look back, we also have some significant supply around 1534. I'm sorry, 1535 up to 1539. That's 1535 up to 1539. Okay. There's that. Uh, and that's gold. And then again, for some weekly context, you know, there's the weekly chart. Now you can see obviously price is stalling out up here because of that, but ultimately there's room between 1428 and uh, 1655. And that's a huge, that's a huge area. So if we can use those smaller time frame levels I just showed you to get in for part of a move like that, that's what we're looking for. Low risk, high reward, high probability. Okay, from there, let's move on to, uh, I believe we have some good opportunities here in copper. Yes, and again, we could stick to pretty much the 60 minute chart. Uh, let me just go to the daily real quick, yeah. So I want to make sure you're aware of this uh, this level up here. It's not that close, and it's not uh, you know real high quality, but it's up here. You just need to make sure you're aware of it. And then from there we go to the 60 minute chart, and we have a uh, two demand zones. I'm sorry, one demand zone that is uh, not 100% fresh, and then a supply zone that is. Here's that supply zone up here. You can see the price points. Okay, and then we've got our demand down here. This is not technically a fresh level, but still uh, a price rallied strong off that area. Be a great place for a, a target on the short position if you choose to take it. And again, always make sure you're okay with the risk, but there it is. Okay, Does that makes sense. And again, just know that this supply zone is not that far from the larger time frame uh, daily supply zone that I just showed you. And again, because there's opportunity in these metals markets, let's stick with them. Let's go over to silver now. Silver has been a, a great mover for us. Uh, in the morning sessions, we had it off this uh, weekly demand zone and it's been uh, flying uh, three, four weeks in a row now. Um, if you're in that rally, great. If you're not, there is a new demand zone, possibly uh, buy a pullback to right down here at the 1767 area. Right down here. Okay. There's silver. I know I've been flying through these. Any, any questions, comments? Um, and again, I'm assuming most people in the group have understand the strategy that I'm talking about. So I'm not going into a lot of details on why those are levels or why they're not, but you know, we can at certain times. Okay. Well, why don't we keep going then? So we started out looking at the dollar Let's go back there. Okay. So again, we've had some great moves off our, you know, our larger time frame levels. There's our last turn off the daily, but you could see here, you know, at least looking at the larger time frames, we don't really have any demand that's anywhere close to current price. Okay, even looking at the weekly, the daily, what have you, there's just not much there. But when we dig a little bit deeper, and I'm going to take you to, yeah, let 
let me take you to the 60 minute chart here. That's not the 60. And I'm gonna I'm just gonna make this a, a different time frame so we can uh, see this all in one picture. Let me just do that. You'll see we have demand sitting just below current price, and we have two levels there. So starting around 96.35. And then um, just sitting, you know, I wouldn't just take this level as is in the dollar. Um, the 96.35 is a good place to start it, but it actually goes lower than what you see here. There's actually a gap just, to, uh, just below this level. So ideally, according to the strategy, you'd want to take this level plus the gap and put your stop on the other side of that. Okay. So it looks like there's no demand in the dollar, but there there is. There are these levels down here that a lot of people are not going to see. So that's uh, you know that that will be an advantage for you. Yeah, you could trade the dollar futures. Mm -hmm. I've done that many times. Okay, from there, like we started with, why don't we go to the euro? So if the dollar is hitting demand, and we could see the euro is now starting to fall off, uh, or, or you know, it just kind of touch the supply zone and begin to drop. See how that uh, obviously how that works there. No big surprise. I think most people in the group know that. But just be aware that that's there. The one thing to pay attention to here is four weeks ago, the euro, or the three and a half weeks ago, the euro was up into this level, barely touched it, and fell. And um, so that, again, when you hear me say we have some secondary evidence, that's what I'm talking about, right? We, the, the initial evidence is just the presence of the supply zone itself. But then we have prices kind of touch this level here and fall, touch it again here and fall. Now we're up here again. So even if we go a little bit deeper into this level, we'd expect the euro to fall uh, again. It's not a matter of how many times price comes back to the level. It's how deep is it going into the level. That's where you get the most important evidence. And uh, I see your question up there about trading the DXY specifically. No, you can't do that. And which brings up another point. If you're going to use the DXY to trade the dollar futures, in other words, if you're going to look for supply and demand levels in the DXY and just you know go trade the dollar futures, be careful when you do that because um, a lot of times you'll see a level in one market that's either higher or lower in another market. So if you're thinking, well, what do you do with that? You know, you probably want to, you know, want to, you want to be looking at both, but you want to stick to the one that you're actually trading, which would be the futures. Just make sure prices reach that level. At the same time that the DXY is key. Good question. Uh, question is, is it, you know, is it best to use EC against DXY? Um, if you want to know where DXY is going to go, yeah, EC will probably help the most simply because, you know, carries the most weight in that index. Um, you know, but if you're thinking of just a, you know, a, a trade that you're going to take in another market because of the dollar, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be the euro or, you know, the euro may not be the best opportunity. There may be others. And again, you know, we'll have more kind of lesson-based sessions uh, coming up. We can go over some of that stuff. Okay, let's take a look at the Aussie from here. Uh, wait, before we do that, give me just a second here. I want to make sure. Oh, okay. So I think, um, I'm not sure if I showed you this, but here's that... Uh, Here's some demand in the euro. We, we we went over the weekly supply, but let's go over this here. We went over the supply side scenario in the euro. Let's go over the demand side. So if you look on the 60-minute chart, down around 110.89, we have some gap demand. Okay, and that goes down to uh, 110.70. Now sitting above that. Right, if you're interested for interested in some, you know, daily income type trading, we have a demand zone here that I'm showing you on the 15-minute chart. Right, about 
And then there's two levels on top of each other to take it down to 111.95. All right. All right, let's keep going. And so that's the euro. Why don't we move on to the Aussie dollar? We're going to focus on the four hour chart here. There we go. Okay. So the four hour chart, you know, you can see where price is at right now. So let me put this level in. Now, is the dollar into our demand zone? Put this one in first. I'm actually going to combine both of these levels. See how I'm doing that over here? What about the dollar, though? Is it at our demand zone at the moment? What would you say? Not yet, exactly. I agree. Therefore, you might be looking at this and saying, wow, the, the Aussie dollar is in a really nice supply zone up here. And I, I, would, I would agree it looks nice. But the odds are always going to be stronger or more in our favor if we uh, short the Aussie dollar when the U.S. dollar is either at demand or, you know, clearly has a nice profit zone above. Does that make sense? Is your short from this level here? All right. The lower level? Okay. Yeah, it's okay. You know, just be careful of where your stop is. You know, you may want, if you're okay with the risk, may want to combine this level and that level and put a stop above the high. Again, the odds are always going to be a little more stacked in your favor when you're looking at the dollar index too. Or you're, I should say you're going to be able to notice when they are and when they aren't more often. Okay, so that's the Aussie dollar. Let's move on now. And let's take a look at the pound. I don't know if any of you have been in our sessions, but these are, we've had these, you know, these are the levels that we've had. Has anybody taken these levels and traded them? Um, our supply and demand zones off the uh, daily chart. Uh, if you have, great. If not, we're going to be able to go down to the 60-minute um, chart here. All right. So let's do that. And on the 60, we have a couple supply zones, but the, the closer one is the one we're going to focus on. And let me just get that little box in here so you can see it clearly. That's 132.26 up to 132.65. Right? And uh, again, notice all the trading activity below that space, opening up that profit zone down to here. So again, um, ideally, when shorting this, if you're okay with the risk, of course, when shorting that, um, it'd be nice if the dollar index was into demand, or at least close to it, with a nice uh, profit zone above. And that would be, in the, again, in the dollar. I think that would help this year all along. All right. I'm sorry, the pounds. So that's the pound. Let's keep going. And let's get over to uh, JY. Let's go over the yen. Um, you know, the challenge with the yen the last few weeks is it's really wedged in between these, you know, these areas of supply and demand here. And we can see them pretty clearly on the larger time frame. I know we've looked at this chart many times in these sessions, but there, there it is for a reminder. Um, I thought there was another zone here, but yeah, so not much to do in the end because we don't want to, we don't want to take trades when price is in the middle like that, right? Let's go over to the Canadian dollar. So after rallying off our demand zones, notice on the daily, 
we're right back up to uh, price points that we've been to before and followed from. Because of that, let's go to the 60 minute chart and identify some uh, supply zone. Again, this one's right out of our sessions also. You can kind of see the black line right up here, but let me scroll back and get it. So price hit it once. Notice the first time back, it felt like a, you know, felt like a rock from that level, suggesting a big supply demand imbalance up there. And then there it is. So time of day is ideal. Notice some of the odds enhancers. And play here, right? Very little trading at the level, strong drop in price from the level. We barely had a pullback to that level. And uh, and again, that's what's that's what's sitting up there. Yeah, we're looking at CD, and that was a supply zone there. Okay. Let's look at another one. So here are the Swiss, if we go to the daily, you'll see, you know, we have a really nice area of supply sitting up there around 104, uh, 104.25, see that? Up to 104.75. Remember, we're getting there, price is getting there. But as we go down to, just know that that level's there and that we have room to the upside. Um, wrong time frame here. Well, we have some new demand, you know, in the market here about 103.50. I just wanted to show you that little level right there, knowing that there's room for price to go up if we get a uh, decline in price here. That makes sense. Okay. Yep. Let's look at the New Zealand dollar. No problem. There it is. So you can see some bigger picture context. Let's work our way down till we find. Uh, Find some supply and demand. We can see some demand is coming in right here. Let's go down another time frame. All right. So this market is running into some supply at current price points. You're running into this right here. Having said that, it's reaching supply when we have a couple demand zones sitting below. You have this little thing up here, but but this one is the more significant one for two reasons. Okay. And then there's more demand just below it. Put a little box in there. And again, there's a good chance this uh, this will pull back. You know, you're getting dangerously close to some larger time frame stuff here. Okay. And uh, let's see here. I know we went over a lot of markets really quick. Here's my email address if you have any questions. We wanted to cover all the markets and definitely um, <clears throat> yeah, all these markets are very related. So yeah, anytime you can, anytime those correlated markets are hitting opposing levels at the same time, that's really ultimately what you want to look for. In and of themselves, it's it's not as correlated as people think they are, but when they hit opposing levels at the same time, that's the key event. I put my email address in the chat there, sam.siding at tradingacademy.com. Um, and uh, yeah, we do a couple of webinars a month. If you have any questions, you can certainly send me an email at that address and uh, we'll do our best to, to figure it out. And um, no, uh, I wouldn't say if you're in one currency trade, don't take another. Just make sure you're okay with the risk and make sure you're not taking like a double trade, right? That's the key. Okay, great. 
Well, we'll see you next time. And again, if you have any questions, there's my email address just above. And, um, and yeah, we'll see you next time. All right.